So we're in Norway, fantastic location in the Nusfjord in Lofoten. And this is uh, one of the sessions of Pangea. We're actually here to prepare for a new session, a refresher, specifically focusing on analogies between Earth geology and the geology of the highlands of the moon. Okay, let's have a look at this side here. Like a dike, like the one that we've seen over there, no? Yes, I think it's exactly the same. And cutting a, a pristine an anorthosite rock. Uh, but you see, it's still altered. The, the best thing is here. No, it definitely is magnetic. So it's a basaltic dike with a magnetite. Very nice. Yeah. So I would say we make take another. Stop. We take a stop here. Okay, got it. Better to show everything because it's really what you may find on the moon with a pristine and orthosites that are cut cut by dikes that can uh, be the feeding of basalt flows. Here we have some of the very few locations in the world where we can find anorthosites. It's typical rock that you can find on the moon and typical highland moon rocks. So it seems poor anorthosite. Exactly like on the moon. Yeah. Excellent. All right. We are doing here a dry run. We are a few geologists uh, from Pangea, so Matteo Massironi, who is the science coordinator. Francesco Saro, who is the course director. Riccardo Pozzobon, who is uh, one of the satellite instructors. And we have a local geologist that is specializing in Lofoten, who is uh, Corey Kullerud. And here with Matthias Maurer and Sam Peiler, that is also with me, Loredana Bessone from ISA, we are preparing a dry run. So we are scouting for location, which are beautiful location, to then come back with a bunch of astronauts and do traverses to prepare them to become geologists on the moon. found a sharp contact, okay, so we are standing on an orthosite here, but there we have a valley, very sharp, two meters thick, more or less, and then we have gabbros again, they transition in norites and then an orthosite again. And maybe you have the repetition of the sequence or it could be related to the structure of the intrusive body as it could be on the moon. And, and yeah. So uh, our astronauts use this device we call the electronic field book to uh, collect scientific information from around an environment. And the, uh, the device then passes that information back to the, uh, the ground support team supporting the mission. So when we go to the moon, we'll need a device like this so that the scientists on Earth can be brought into the field, onto the moon surface with the astronauts and therefore improve the science decision-making and hopefully uh, improve the quality of the samples returned. Here in the Lofoten in Norway, what types of rock do we have here? Yeah, if you look uh, around here, you see a, a quite homogeneous grey rock. That is uh, what a rock type we call anorthosite. Uh, but if you look at uh, this uh, two meter wide yellowish uh, zone here, that's a different rock. This is, uh, we call it a gabbro. If we now think there is no vegetation, let's just forget about it. Do you think, Matteo, this could be how we imagine the moon surface? Yes, I, I think it's perfectly identical to what we may imagine are the islands without uh, regolith stuff over them. In 
which we are mainly anorthosites that can be intruded by gabbros that are the magnesium suite that we have discussed during the lessons. Okay, so this would be the best place to train astronauts for a mission to the moon? Sure it is, for mission on highlands to the moon, yes. So we basically covered now in Pangaea more or less all the geological features of the moon, right? The major geological features we've done impact cratering in reefs. We've done um, big, the big basaltic maria in Lanzarote. Lanzarote yeah. And now the highlands. We needed this. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Now the course is complete. The course way. is complete. Yeah. yeah.